Hi, and welcome to Enchantment of Eternity's Game of Thrones Season 5 Predictions Update, A Day in the Life, The Trailer, and more. In this video, I give the latest updates to my Season 5 predictions based off of the first trailer, which I have already a video out for, uh, but wanted to touch on a little bit more, and the Season 5 making of a uh, special, A Day in the Life, which was released a few days ago. So I have to give a spoiler warning for all the Song and Ice Fire uh, books, as my predictions are based off those books, so if you haven't read them, you probably shouldn't be watching this video. So before I get into A Day in the Life, I want to talk about something that was revealed recently, and that, and that was uh, that it's been confirmed that Kevin Lannister will be appearing in Season 5, and he will be played by the same actor. In my uh, previous prediction videos, I said it's been reported that someone who may be Kevin Lannister was spotted on set, but recently uh, it's been confirmed that it is in fact Ian Gelder who played Kevin Lannister in Seasons 1 and 2. In my original predictions video, I predicted that Kevin would be the Hand of the King and wouldn't simply reject Cersei like he did in the books, but would be more like a voice of reason trying to correct Cersei's path of destruction, but a voice that would be ignored. As opposed to how he was portrayed in the books as a more of an authoritative figure who stands his ground. I'm basing this off of how he's been portrayed in the show so far, though his very uh, brief appearances. And I'm mostly sticking to those predictions, although I'm not all that firm on them, as I, I could see it easily going um, a different way. But we'll have to see. Overall, I don't think he'll appear that much. Um, he'll be more of a side character, although I, you know... I am predicting that his appearance this season will be bigger than it was in the first uh, two seasons. And I'm still holding out for Varys showing up and killing him like he did in the books, uh, but rather um, killing him uh, in preparation of Aegon's conquest of King's Landing. He'll, he'd do it uh, in, in anticipation of Daenerys' arrival. Uh, so I think in my original predictions I said it wouldn't happen until Season 6, and I think that still sounds about right to me. Uh, so moving on to Season 5, Day in the Life special. Uh, so this was quite different uh, than last year's special. Has this focused a lot more on the behind-the-scenes factor of uh, what it's like to make the show rather than being a foreshadowing of what's to come in the story this season as the previous year's special was? And for that reason, me many people didn't like it as much, and I'm in that camp as well. Uh, it had less interviews with actors and writers and focused more more on the production side of things, with a heavy focus on uh, producers, location managers, art department, set design, costuming, uh, and although I am interested in filmmaking uh, and know a lot about um, filmmaking as it was the area I studied, these are the areas of filmmaking I'm not all that interested in. Um, of course, the main focus of the special is something that is unique to Game of Thrones, and that is how it is filmed in several countries at once. Uh, so I understand why they chose to make it, and I thought it was interesting to watch once, but it's not something I'd watch repeatedly over and over again like I did with last year's special. Which, as I said, is more about the story, which overall are what people are more interested in. Uh, personally, I think this special would have been more suited for a like a Blu-ray or DVD extra, and uh, the promotional special should have been more like last year's one to get people more pumped for the new season. Uh, but I see that the filming in five look, um, different countries thing is something they're really proud of and they want to emphasize, uh, so fair enough. Um, however, there were a few nuggets of uh, useful information thrown in this special as well, so I want to talk about this and how it affects my predictions. First off, they show a scene of Daenerys talking to Barrister, which seems to be about a few attacks by the Sons of the Harpy, which they said uh, was in episode 1 or 2. Uh, so this isn't too surprising, this is something I assumed they would get into right away, and that makes sense. Next is a scene of Cersei going to talk to the High Sparrow, which was said to be in episodes 3 or 4. Uh, so this seems about right as well. Um, I'm assuming uh, that by the time uh, the High Sparrow 
is the High Septon, which means uh, because Cersei's going to talk to him, so I don't know why she would go to talk to him if he wasn't the High Septon already. Which means that the High Septon from the previous seasons must be dead by this point, meaning his marriage, uh, the marriage of Marjorie and Tommen, must take place in episode one or two, since he was involved in that we saw from the trailer. Uh, which again is very much to my liking, but I still could be wrong about these. Uh, and then the most important piece of information we get is talk about the set at Hard Home, meaning uh, the place by the sea we saw in the trailer, which I said in my previous video might be Eastwatch, is actually Hard Home, which makes a lot of sense to me as well because it looked a bit more like a wildling settlement than a Night's Watch castle to me. Well, at least from the brief shot we got in the trailer. Uh, but this special uh, gave us several pieces of interesting information about Hard Home. Uh, first off, it showed the director of episodes 7 and 8 as being the one inspecting the Hard Home set and figuring out where all the action would take place, which suggests to me that Hard Home would feature most prominently in episodes 7 and 8. Uh, it might appear in more episodes than that, but these will be the ones where we spend the most time there. Um, another interesting piece of information is it describes one of the most complex and ambitious scenes being filmed filmed over three weeks and shows a lot of uh, battles featuring Jon Snow taking place at Hardhome. Uh, so how does this all affect the predictions I made? Well, I'll be honest, I didn't quite remember Hard Home from the books. I had to look it up, and apparently it was the place to which Jon Snow was planning to send Tormund Giantsbane on a mission to rescue hundreds of stranded wildlings that were in danger uh, just before he got stabbed by his fellow men of the Watch. Uh, so obviously I think this is going to play out differently in the show. Uh, different things are going to happen in different orders. I think in the show, Hard Home will be the biggest, last remaining stronghold of the the wildlings to which Jon Snow will lead a mission to retrieve the remaining wildlings uh, and bring them back to join Mance and Tormund and the other wildlings at Castle Black. But in order to convince the majority of the wildlings to return with them, they first have to defeat the violent group who remain in um, remain indigent uh, to the Night's Watch and have all the other wildlings under their thumb. And uh, the wildlings will be led by this group, uh, this guy whom we saw in the trailer who has been identified as a thin named Laboda. Uh, so in my trailer video I speculated that the Lord of Bones would be leading the wildling opposition this year but of course now I'm changing that to Laboda and the Lord of Bones will be what he's always been, an underling who is nothing more than a minor character. Uh, so my overall predictions for the wall this season is uh, the first couple episodes will focus on the Lord Commander election and won't be resolved until like episode 4 or 5. Uh, and then we'll switch focus um, building to the Battle of Hardhome, which will be resolved in the second half of the season. Um, I still stand very firm on my prediction that Jon Snow will not be stabbed this year, and that will be held off until season 6. Uh, more than ever, I'm convinced there, um, there simply isn't enough time in one season to uh, deal with John becoming Lord Commander and then giving the audience time to get used to him as Lord Commander before he gets stabbed. Uh, if you have to, you have to remember that the Wall storyline would only, on average, only get about 10 to 15 minutes of screen time per an episode, and I don't think that's enough time to cover all the ground they need to get up to uh, before they get to the stabbing. And I think instead, this year we'll focus on John becoming Lord Commander and then trying to deal with the remaining wildlings still at large and then next year we'll deal with the growing tensions between the Night's Watch and their new wildling allies uh, and we'll end with John going down. Uh, so a few more observations from the first trailer I wanted to touch on. Uh, first dealing with uh, the aesthetics of the trailer and uh, that is I heard a lot of people complaining about the song that was used. That was apparently a bad cover of a David Bowie song. Um, I'm not familiar with this particular David Bowie song uh, but uh, you know I'll take everyone's word for it that it was a bad cover. But bad cover or not, I thought this song was perfect for the trailer and it really set the tone. I particularly liked how after the Game of Thrones title card came up, the music sort of kept in beat with all these flashes where we get a drag 
dragon spitting fire, uh, wildlings roaring in the water, and cool shots of Ilaria sand. Uh, I felt the music really went well uh, with the trailer, so I'm not on board with all this whining about the song. Uh, an example of a song that didn't work for a trailer would be, I think, the like fourth trailer, I think, released for season four that had a cover of In Excess's uh, The Devil Inside. Um, the cover was okay, I guess, but the song itself didn't work at all for the trailer. And that was definitely my least favorite uh, Game of Thrones trailer. This one, I thought, worked uh, really well. I thought it was fine. Uh, but getting more into the content of the trailer, I also noticed uh, many people coming up with theories about the harpy being torn down at the end. Uh, so the theories they come up with it was a result of someone fighting against Daenerys, uh, tearing it down to spite her, which I think is completely wrong because the harpy is a symbol of the traditional Miranese that opposed Dany. Uh, that's why the main group that actively opposes her is called the Sons of the Harpy. And this is the Harpy. So it makes no sense to me that they would tear down their own symbol to spite Dany. Um, makes much more sense to me that uh, Dany would tear their symbol down to spite them after the attacks commence. And I noticed a comment online where someone confirmed that in fact this is what happened in the books, but it was just quickly mentioned in a line of dialogue and emphasis was not put on it, which apparently uh, will be put on it in the show, which makes sense to me. Again, I'm sticking to the prediction I made in my original prediction video that the wise masters of Yunkai and the whole Yunkai thing will not play nearly as big of a role as it did in the books. And it will just, you know, it will be mentioned in the background and the main conflict uh, will be with the Sons of Harpy in Season 5. Uh, and it will focus mostly entirely on them. And everything I've seen in the trailer so far only reinforces this belief. Also, uh, let's talk about Sansa for a bit. Um, and she's probably the biggest mystery in Season 5 as she's going completely off book. As I mentioned in my Season 5 uh, trailer video, there's been some speculation out that Sansa may take Lady Stoneheart's place as the one going after the phrase. Um, I also mentioned I wasn't completely behind that theory, and indeed the more I think about it, uh, the less likely I think it is. Um, apparently there's another theory going around, the net, uh, that Sansa is going to take Jane Poole's place as fake Arya, and marry Ramsay Bolton as part of uh, some master plan to get revenge on the Boltons. And I must say, I like this theory a lot more than the other. Um, uh, the, the one about Sansa taking Lady Stoneheart's place, or the theory uh, that Ramsay's girlfriend Miranda will take fake Arya's place. However, I'm still not completely sold on it. Um, but as part of the theory, um, the scene in the trailer where we see Sansa looking at the ceiling uh, is in Winterfell, according to this theory. And I think this would be a good way to bring uh, Ramsay and Reek back to the forefront by introducing a major character like Sansa to their storyline because in the past couple of seasons uh, they've just been kind of in the background doing their own thing and not really appearing that much. Uh, it also goes along with what I was saying about the showrunners wanting to consolidate storylines and characters as much as possible. Uh, it would change the dynamic of uh, fake Arya a bit as she wouldn't be some helpless girl but in fact, uh, have a master plan to get revenge on the Boltons. Although, if this is the case, I think she would still pretend to be Arya rather than marry him as Sansa. Uh, because for one thing, Sansa's already married, and for another thing, Sansa wanted, is wanted uh, for murder of uh, Joffrey. So the Boltons being allied with the Lannisters would be obligated to send her back to Cersei to face justice, or simply execute her themselves. But I could see Sansa being the one to come up with the whole uh, fake Arya idea, um, although it would probably be uh, Littlefinger who concocts this plan and convinces Sansa to go along with it. 
Uh, this would also make sense that Sophie Turner said that she was involved in a scene that was traumatic, the film, seeing uh, if Ramsey was in her storyline, it's not too far-fetched to think something really messed up would go down. Uh, but we'll have to see. As I said, I'm not completely sold on this idea yet. Um... So that's it for my latest Game of Thrones update video. Uh, you should check out my channel for other Game of Thrones content and make sure you subscribe to keep up with the future Game of Thrones videos I'll be doing. And thanks a lot for watching.